think Mitsubishi Lancer and you tend to think Mitsubishi Evo, which is to ignore the fact that the company also makes the more affordable, more sensible Lancer model that we're looking at here. This latest generation version is more refined, better built, better looking and just more of a viable proposition than any model before it. With both saloon and sportback models offered at razor sharp pricing, this car deserves its own headlines. Now you can see what Mitsubishi is trying to do with their latest generation Lancer lineup. They're attempting what Subaru is doing, namely making the rest of their lineup competitive instead of just relying on the turbocharged headbangers at the top of the range. Now, the problem with this strategy is that it means going head to head with some very accomplished cars. Locking horns with the might of Ford, Vauxhall, Renault, and Toyota is a tough gig. Mind you, it seems that so far this latest Lancer has shaped up pretty well. Mitsubishi has kept the keen pricing common to older but forgettable versions of this car and improved interior quality, drivability and styling. Now, you may not be driving an Evo at the wheel of one of these, but you're still getting a good car at a cracking price. Now, at this point, you might be expecting me to say that you're getting a good chunk of the driving manners of a Lancer Evo 10 at a fraction of the price. But I think you're smarter than that. With an entry-level 1.5-litre petrol engine packing just 109 brake horsepower, those sort of comparisons aren't going to wash for too long. Yeah, it's a fairly willing unit, but rest of 60 is still 11.4 seconds away, or a yawning 14.3 seconds if you go for the automatic box. A better bet is the 1.8 litre VVT petrol engine with 143 brake horsepower, and that makes rest to 60 in 9.6 seconds. Or there's also the option of a Volkswagen source 2 litre DID diesel, and that's the unit I'm driving here with 138 brake horsepower. That's just as quick, but it offers a lot more pulling power, a lot more torque. So you're not getting Evo style go, but the steering feels much the same. The cabin's very similar and the Lancer feels very composed at speed, helped by a chassis that's 56% stiffer in terms of torsional rigidity than its predecessor. There's also a clever active stability control system that reduces rotational movement when the vehicle starts to skid. You don't get four-wheel drive in the way that you do with a comparable cheap Subaru Impreza, but the front-wheel drive chassis is nimble and traction control is offered. A big part of the old Lancer's problem was that it looked so staid. This time around, Mitsubishi isn't making that mistake. Even the entry-level model looks sharp with the aggressive squinting front end and the rising waistline giving it a pugnacious stance. This car is built on a wider track and a longer wheelbase than its predecessor, although it's slightly shorter in terms of overall length. Now there's a choice of the four-door saloon that I've got here or a five-door hatch that Mitsubishi christened the Sportback. Now a big draw for both is the improved interior quality. It's still maybe a notch or two off the top cars in this class, but it's no longer leagues off the pace as was the case with the old model. Nice touch of these cowled instruments. There's a bit more space than you might expect thanks to the wheelbase and the track increases. Although if you go for the Sportback hatch, it's no cavernous load lugger, this steeply raked rear impinging a little on luggage capacity. In fact, if you really want luggage capacity, you might even be better going for the saloon version I've got here, which has got one of the biggest boots in its class. Prices lie in the 13 to 19,000 pound bracket. And that's comparable, of course, to all the family hatchback sector's big hitters, cars like Ford's Focus, Vauxhall's Astra and Renault's Megane. You'll pay slightly more for the saloon with its useful split-folding rear seats than you will for the five-door Sportback. And we'd recommend stretching to the 1.8 litre petrol over the entry-level 1.5. The two litre diesel's worth considering too, but only if your annual mileage is high enough to justify the price premium being asked. Now equipment levels, well, they're very strong. All models coming with air conditioning, twin front side and knee airbags, a trip computer, a rear spoiler, uh, an MP3 compatible stereo and electric windows all around. So you certainly get more for your money with a Lancer and you may find yourself 
able to stretch to one of the plusher models that really come dripping with extra features. To give you an example, the top of the range version that I've got here that will cost you probably a bit less than you pay for a, an entry level version of the Golf GT. Well, that comes with features like uh, a pan-European HDD satellite navigation system with a color touch screen, a 30 gigabyte music server with iPod input, heated leather seats, uh, a vehicle personalization system, and an advanced vehicle data system. Now that's an unbeatable kit list. Uh, fuel economy, well that's competitive right across the board. The entry level 1.5 litre petrol manages 44.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Step up to the 1.8 VVT petrol and you get 36.7 miles to the gallon on the same cycle. While the 2 litre DID diesel that I'm driving here manages 44.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Now emissions have been kept uh, properly in check too. For the three engines, the respective figures are uh, 168 grams per kilometre for the 1.5, 188 grams per kilometre for the 1.8, and 165 grams per kilometre for the diesel. It's worth remembering though, if you uh, choose the automatic gearbox with the 1.5 litre model, it's a rather old transmission and economy and emissions both take a turn for the worse. So if you want an auto box, I'd go for the more high tech CVT unit that you can get with the 1.8 litre car, where economy and emissions are affected much less. Insurance groupings, well they're fairly reasonable, line between groups five and nine. Improving residual values depend on this car attaining a bit more of a status, something that should be helped by Mitsubishi's excellent reliability record. Now this is a car that looks great, drives sharply, comes with an almost improbable list of standard equipment and won't cost the earth to run. Now, publicising that kind of fact to British buyers has traditionally not been a Mitsubishi strong point, but things seem to be changing thanks to the confidence that comes with having a stronger product portfolio. Cars like the little i City car, the Colt Super Mini, the Outlander Family 4x4 and now this Lancer, they're all strong contenders in their respective sectors, but not cars that appear near the top of many people's shopping lists. Drive a Lancer and you might well wonder why. 